to everybody. I really have no words to express my deep gratitude for both my good friend, uh, Tony Tomsia and Ramon. And of course, all, the, all my former students and all the people that joined me in these uh, emotive uh, journeys. And then let's start with my so-called summary of 14 years of research in material science. Really, I, whatever I will emphasize, some notes. Be worried, be, be patient. He's not going to talk to you about 14 years of research. <laughs> but the first thing I like to, to express from my heart is to thanks to my family for their support and infinite patience with me. If I were to start all over again, something that really will change very much is the time devoted to my family. I am very sorry to have missed many family events because of my work, something that I cannot recover. But life is like that. Well, and then, how I can summarize in few lines, in few sentences, 14 years of intensive research work. I just put in the, in the screen a few sentences. Really, it was a lot of work. And also, I have to tell you that not negligible part of this work were frustrating. I mean, we work for whatever we don't like. Not everything is beautiful in research, I have to say from the beginning. But in the opposite side, I have to say that also I am very uh, proud about uh, my work because few indescribable, exciting moments happen. And also because this work gives me um, the capability to have really enjoyable, happy hours. Something that I believe is not so frequent in other kinds of activity. Well, and then let me start talking about the two parts, talking about the few uh, indescribable, exciting moments. And also, I will talk a little bit about the, the happy hours. And then how I will tell you this kind of indescribably happy moments through through three, the history, or the short history of three papers. This is just the short history of three papers. And then I will start my talk in Hearst Mining Building, 1978, UC Berkeley, Hearst Mining Building. Uh, it's, a, it's a beautiful building that you can see over there. And I was uh, there working with Professor Joe Pask. And I was there because I, I got a a Fulbright post scholarship. And then that was my starting point. Then I have in mind, of course, something to work. And I just talked to Professor Pass a little bit about what kind of thing I would like to do. Um, I suggest that I would like to, to, to work on alumina powder sintering problems, so on. And then Professor Pass gave me this these challenging topics, packing and sintering behavior of alumina powder at different set of potential pH. And he was a very honest person. And he said, well, I, I have very limited knowledge about rheology. I cannot help you in this regard. And I already at that time, I have no, no very little. I have almost no knowledge about rheology of powder. And then, well, he said, well, we have to do it. And then he said, but we have a very good uh, uh, facilities in the processing, uh, mineral processing department. And Professor uh, Forstenau is the head of this department. And you have to get an appointment with him, um, maybe to get permission. But in the middle time, he gave me this paper. You have to read this paper, you know, and then you, you have to uh, start thinking about how to do. Well, and the paper, the title of the paper with the particle D, you know, don't forget it, the zero point of charge of alumina powder. 
And one of the, of the authors was Professor Fortenau. And then uh, I, I read this paper, of course, like a Bible. And I immediately asked for, uh, for appointment. And then I meet Professor Fortenau. Um, and then he, the first thing he, he, he did was to ask me about my background. What is your background? So my background is physics. Physics? You are physics? Are you are going to work with this? Are you silly? He started to laugh. He said, well, I was a little bit shy, but yes, I, I must do it. Anyway, and then he gave me the permission to use the, the facility, and I read this paper very carefully. I think in this paper, there are two things important, no? Insta apart from the D particle. D particle means it is, this is the reality. Don't, 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 don't be mistaken, you know, because we did just the, the more perfect measurement for zero point charge. And then I read this paper, and the main conclusion of this paper, of course, was that the isoelectric point of alumina, alpha alumina, is located at 9.1 pH. This is the main result. And the experimental procedure was also very important. We have to take the powder and aging the powder in, in an alumina container like this one. And this, this container is a pyrex, it's a silica rich glass. And then we have to do it at pH 7 for at least three weeks with several shaking in the middle. And then I take my powder that was different than the powder of, of uh, Professor Fortenau paper. And then I, I, I follow strictly, you know, the recipe of, uh, of Professor Fortenau paper. And then I, I, I do it. Um, tell me, I will tell you the, what happened after four months. I spent four months at least eh, working like crazy at this mineral processing special laboratory, okay, under the supervision of somebody else because he doesn't trust in me too much. And then after repeat three times closely the experimental procedure of forcing a paper, I go into the conclusion that I, I, something was wrong, but the, the, the result was always the same, 3.8. And after three times repeating this very long experimental procedure, I was sure about something. My procedure is okay. This data is okay, but it's quite far away from the 9.1 of Fortenau paper. And they say, well, something is wrong, but I don't know why. I was so worried because, you know, I spent four months, and I say, I four months here in UC Berkeley, the more famous university in the world, and I really have nothing. Whatever I have is, is, is a result that cannot fit with any paper in the world. I cannot say anybody, you know, after four months in, in this so sophisticated laboratory at that time, I got this kind of a result. And then I was so worried and depressive that uh, I asked everybody else, I read whatever, and nobody gave me any reason. Why this uh, strange result? And then, well, I was totally desperate, you can imagine, to find any explanation of it. And then, one day, when I was so depressive, walking down to the long department mineral processing corridor, very dark, and then I hear somebody, someone, speaking Spanish. You know that my English is not very good today, but at that time it was in existence. <laughs> And then, you know, I, I say, oh, somebody is speaking Spanish. I just turn down and, and, and make a look. And I saw a person, you know, what is this person? And the person was Dr. Jorge Rubio, who was working as, in a postdoc position with Professor Fortenau. This is just this guy. This guy at uh, 2004, he was with the President Lula, you know, uh, in the Technological Innovation Award in Brasil. And then this guy, so I immediately I tell this guy all my problems. You know, look, I don't know anything about that. I took four months over here. I cannot back to Spain with this stupid result. And so on. Do you have any idea about that? And he was listening carefully. He said, well, right now I cannot tell you anything, but let me check my file. And then when I check my file, maybe I, I can give you some answer. I will, I will meet you later. And then a few days after this conversation, Jorge Rubio came to my office and showed me a copy, something unbelievable, a copy of a personal letter, this kind of letter, one young sky copy in, type, in typewriter 
that uh, used at that particular time. And then in this letter, it was a letter, a copy of a letter from Professor Kitchener, Imperial College, to Professor Ego Matihevi in Clarkson University. And he already had this copy. I don't ask how, the, how this guy collected this copy, <laughs> but he already showed me the copy. <laughs> the question is, in this particular letter, Professor Kitchener point out in his letter that the condensation polymerization rate of silica in solution has two maxima. One between two and three that everybody knows. Everybody knows that the isolated point of, of silica is around two. This is quite well known. I think it was well known at that time. But the other news, important news, is he also suggested that there is another one between pH six and seven and eight. And then uh, he said, look, you, you, your powder has been eight in a silica container at this particular range of pH, that means pH seven. Maybe this is something related with the solution. Oh, immediately I start to, to be you know, excited because maybe this is, this is really true. And the more funny thing is at that particular time, no, no, no internet was available and these people can connect themselves and giving this kind of, of, of uh, um, result or, or, or this kind of approach that uh, they share with other professors for nothing, something that today is almost impossible. The competitivity is so high that nobody will do something like that. Eh? This is something I, I, I thanks very much uh, this Professor Kirchner for the possibility to, you know, to have this idea at that particular time. And then, well, I was so good. I start working like crazy. And then what I did is I repeat all again and then using polyethylene bottle instead of pyrex silica rich bottle. And then also I removing the surface silica from alumina grains by HP treatment and so on, so on. I did a lot of things more. And then after working like crazy at two, two o'clock in the morning, one day when I already finished with all the stuff, I made the, the whole procedure according with the with pH seven and so on, according with Professor Forstenau paper. And then I obtained the result. A14, that's with my alumina, have an isoelectric point of about nine. Whoa, that's what really, two o'clock in the morning. I was so excited. That, um, unfortunately, I have no champagne. I have nothing to drink. <laughs> I was alone in the, in the laboratory, but what really an exciting moment. And then the question you already have in mind is, and then what is the reason why, in the case of Fortino paper, the polymerization of silica PSA do not affect the isoelectric point of aluminum powder? Because you know, we did exactly the same. And the answer is, he used alumina linden, uh, or alumina alpha alumina uh, linde, uh, with a specific surface area of 15 square meter. That means the silica coverage of so high, a specific surface was less than 5%, and the, the, this silica doesn't affect the isoelectric powder. In my case, A14 alumina was a coarse alumina powder with an average particle size of about two micrometers, and then one micrometer square is very, is very little then the coverage was higher than 90%. This is what the reason. Well, then we, we published in this paper, electrophoretic behavior of silica bearing alumina surface. This is the picture of the author at that particular time. Even if you don't believe, this is myself. And, and then I have to tell you that this was probably one of the more, um, of the paper that I, I love more. You know, I, I, I learned so much with this, with this procedure. Um, I was so happy when we, we can publish this paper in, in the rest of my life. And because of this paper, because of the intensely work in this paper, and I didn't know nothing about uh, uh, the chemistry of powder, and then this was open to me the potential possibility of the rheology of powder uh, in ceramic processing, something that uh, was for me like magic just the effect of surfactant, for instance, just two PPV, few PPVs can flocculate a, a, a powder suspension or can deflocculate a powder suspension like magic. You put two PPV in a big container and this, this guy, Jorge, showed me how it's possible to deflocculate or flocculate powder. So something like that must be interesting to, you know, to study, to use it. And then I come back to Spain, an Instituto Ceramica and Glass, in 1980 with the fixed idea 
to build up a new laboratory of, of rheology. I offered this job to Joaquin Requena, who has a background in chemistry, and he was very enthusiastic about this idea. Then he started to work on it, and then we, we start buying uh, facilities and equipment. And finally, well, after two years, this laboratory was almost finished, and, uh, and then I applied for my first project on advanced ceramic in, in 1982. Little bit of water. Well, and then everything starts. And let's say two years later, in 1984, Professor Vicente Sanchez Galvez. At, the, at that time, he was the director of the Spanish National Research Project, called to me by phone for a confidential meeting in his office. I was a little bit worried. I was, how, we, are, we are doing nothing wrong. But I, immediately I, I met his people in his office, and he informed, informed me about a national emergency. He said, our tanks are totally unprotected versus the high-energy uranium bullet and the required armor to contain a special ceramic plate, according with military intelligence he has. We know from our military intelligence that this armor are using other people, contain plate of ceramic. And this is very important to, to know the, the composition and the shape and so on. This is the, the thing. And then they select me. He said that they selected me. He said, why, why I? I have, you know, many people in this country. He said, no, 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 very little. He said, they selected me as an especially in advanced ceramic because of the, of the, of the title of my, of my project was advanced ceramic. He said, well, something that advanced ceramic. This guy must know a lot about ceramic. Well, I, I was not. Anyway, but the title is very important, OK? <laughs> <laughs> and then. He also, he also uh, selected Manolo Elizas, uh, uh, that is a professor of, of civil engineering high school, as expert in fracture mechanics, to urgently develop appropriate armor for the Spanish tanks. And then they give us um, 500 million pesetas, around 3 million euros. It was a huge amount of money at that particular time. And then the, the project was for four, four year project, 1908 to 19. Uh, 1904 to 1908, and then the Ministry of Defense support this, and we start buying things and so on. We have a lot of money. We can buy a lot of equipment and so on. We did. It was quite interesting for, for us. And then in, in this particular time, you know, 1984, Spain was not a member of NATO. Then the Spanish army has no information about this kind of war. And they thought to me that even if our military officer attend the, the, the military trial in, 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 the, in the field, uh, they were not able to observe how this uh, armor was constituted to make a look. It was like top secret. Well, and then you can imagine we start working and fabricating by slip casting. We know very well this technique, this kind of, of ceramic plate, like this one with 10 by 10 by 1 centimeter plate with different composition. We start with, you know, with alumina, with zirconia, with mulai, with whatever, we, because we have no idea previously what kind of material. And this plate was first tested at the facility of uh, Professor Elises. And one day passed uh, screening, they had to be tested, uh, definitive tested by the Spanish army, and so on, so on. We were, you know, we were making set like that. And we were continuing like that. And then we were working like crazy, and then we, we cannot publish anything else at that particular time, but we were working a lot. Then one day, that means in 1987, I met uh, Ilhan Aksa. Ilhan Aksa was at that time, he is already a former um, PhD student of Professor Pass. And then because of this, we know each other very well. And then in a meeting, that I don't remember exactly when it was, I met her, him, and he was very much uh, interested in, in biomimetic at that time. And he talked to me by the first time, said, you know, look at, 
we, we, we are now interested in, in, in to biomimetic because you know some, some shells, like the Avalon shells, have a extremely high uh, mechanical properties. This extremely high mechanical property, we believe, he said, is due to the larger structure of this shell. In reality, we know this picture is from my from myself, um, and this 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 one can bring to me Pilar uh, Pena, and she she come from Galicia. She told to me the real one. <laughs> and this, uh, I can study this one, and then we make this picture, and this picture is unbelievable because you, this is just pure calcium carbonate, not pure calcium carbonate, and just in the middle we have a protein, but the protein is not visible here. It's quite pure, you know, no impurities. And then the more fascinating thing is just single crystal of aragonite, mechanical property like K1C, sigma F, the mechanical property is multiplied by a factor of 10 in the case of, of shell. This shell, a factor of 10 in mechanical properties is like a Nobel Prize. To reach a factor of 10 is something unbelievable. Reach a factor of 10 in, electronic, in electrical property is not a news, but in mechanical property is a, is a lot. And then I was really impressed. I said, my God, this is unbelievable. And then when I come back, I immediately uh, talked to Joaquin Requena. He said, man, look at this conversation I have. Maybe, maybe we can make this kind of layered structure through sequential casting with, you know, with two different uh, compositions just to start. We can start with alumina and alumina with monoclinic zirconia that we know very well because we already, already deal with. And then we say, oh, yes, yes, we can do it. And these people, you know, start working at that particular time. Uh, Requena half a student, they was uh, now professor, uh, Rodrigo Moreno, and both, you know, immediately take actions uh, and were fabricated in this place by, by this simple uh, suggest uh, procedure. I mean, you, you, have a, you have a plaster mold, you have a, a suspension, you slip cast the suspension after a, a fixed time, you remove the liquid, and you take the other one and make the same, remove the liquid, and so on, so on, so on. And finally, you have, you have in green, you know, let's say two, two plates with, let's say, 10 larger. No, it look very simple, you know. <laughs> Maybe uh, well, the, 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 the fact was, was very simple and not no, no problem. And then after drying and sintering at 16, 50 degrees C, by visual inspection, the place looked perfect. And we were very happy. Oh, no problem, no cracking. Then polished the cross-section for optical analysis. And the result was really very disappointing. We were last looking at the microscope and we observed plenty of pores at the larger interface. And then we said, well, my God, this is because maybe between one and two uh, uh, a slip cast, we, we entrap poles, and these poles cannot be removed during the, during the sintering process, and ah, that's impossible, you know. This is how we can make a porous and, and like that, you know. And then I was very sorry because I feel guilty. Um, uh, I, it is my fault, my crazy idea. I talked to these people, sorry very much. And then we completely stopped working on it, completely. And after two months, and after two months, I was sitting in my desk, and I have the play over there, and I take the play in my hand, and I realize, my God, this place is heavy. It doesn't look porous, you know. We never did any, any uh, density analysis. We, why not? Immediately move. I make a, a, a chemides uh, density, and I make all kind of, of measurements, and then I, I, I collect this data, 90, 90.5 theoretical density. My God, this is true. And then this plate is not pores. That means this pore we observed at the microscope was artifact, but not really pore. Why? Well, because pull out, because something wrong. And then may, uh, we have made probably an inappropriate polishing in the polishing machine that we bought, you know, a fantastic polishing machine, but we now adjust the pressure, and the pressure was too high, pull out, and terrible vision, you know. And then I immediately was meeting him, he said, well, Joaquin, something, you know, was wrong during the polishing. I, I got this stuff. And then, well, finally, we, we repolish and we get a fantastic picture. We went, this fantastic picture just was a, a, a Friday. And then, oh my God, this is fantastic. Give me to me all the data you have. And during the weekend, I will write a, a, a paper and we will immediately publish. And I did, and that was this paper. This is a short note. 
And then, uh, the, by the first time, we, we proved that by sequential list casting, it's possible to obtain so nice, so nice kind of microstructure, larger structure. But the more important point of this paper is not the larger structure we obtain. This is quite obvious, no? We can predict. But whatever is interesting in this paper is the success of the simple technique. We have a very simple technique to manipulate material, to manipulate any kind of material. We can open our, our, our mind, you know, and then this opened for us a new avenue of research and in my group, and this was very fruitful. I will tell you some of the, of the, of the uh, success we have. We can, for instance, we can prepare adapt by, by this simple technique, we can prepare material like that with a, with a larger A, is uh, alumina, with a coarse uh, microstructure, or, or, or B with a very fine microstructure, alumina, alumina zirconia, or we can, for instance, uh, fabricate it, a functionally great layer of material, like this one, that this, this, this layer is uh, YTCP, and this one is alumina, that means we can move from here to here and we can increase the primitivity value for about a factor of three. You know, this is in functional application, maybe this is very important, and so on, so on. And then it was really very much excited. Um, one of the things we did is to something that was much, much difficult at, at that time to, to perform, is just to uh, build up material with tailor-made internal stresses. We can tailor-made internal stresses. They, in this, for instance, in this paper that was made by Pilar Pena and myself, and then we, we just make alumina and, and, and mulai larger composite. And you can see here, for instance, in this particular layer, the, the, this layer is subjected to pure compression. And this one is subjected to pure tension. That means we can manipulate this. We can just put the, 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 the compression or tension, we, we can do it. And then later on, you know, in 1987, uh, with uh, uh, other students we have, um, we develop one, one series of, of, of larger material with, uh, with a, a larger inside, about 400 um, uh, micrometer inside, inside and, and then this larger is under compression, uh, stress. If you can see that this crack is stopped at the compressing layer. And this is something that uh, uh, was not possible or I, we no, don't, don't see before. And this uh, particular layer structure, uh, we prove that this particular structure have a improved fatigue resistance, much, much higher than other one. What it means that we, if we have uh, material with this particular internal stresses inside the body, about half a millimeter inside, all crack over here immediately has stopped over there. And this was a new paradigm. And this new paradigm is the paradigm already you have in your um, cellular phone with the gorilla glass. The gorilla glass is exactly, is based exactly in this principle. The gorilla glass have an internal stress because of, you know, uh, interchange of, of, of sodium by, by potassium and so on. They develop an internal stress and this internal stress stop cracking and then it's much more higher uh, mechanical property than the conventional uh, glass. And this is just the reason why, for instance, this Gorilla Glass is going to succeed even versus the Sapphire one because the Sapphire, as Tony said before, is, is, is very good, very high hardness, but it's very expensive and very difficult to uh, fabricate. Well, and that was uh, interesting. Well, also we can use this larger material, you know, to study solid state reaction. For instance, in the case of alumina titania, the formation of, of aluminum titanite was not so, so clear at the literature at that time. We can see that it's forming inside the titania, not inside the alumina, or just um, to study the formation of, of um, zircona alumina reaction sintering material with mulai plus zircona. It was visible that we can use this in a very interesting uh, way. Well, and then we transfer, we transfer this idea to another field, for instance, in coating. We can coat now um, titanium, aluminum, vanadium alloy, but instead to, to coat with, with a, a, a hench, hench uh, glass, the hench glass doesn't fit because of, because of different thermal expansion, we, we just made this kind of coating with increasing bioactivity. We, this is stable mechanically speaking, 
and also we make another another jump ahead uh, ahead together <laughs> uh, but yet developing more complex rheology this was more complex rheology in we just study the rheology of complex suspension system like this one this system is this suspension is just mulai molybdenum suspension and you can see this blue the, the, the liquid superductan is, is blue color because of the molybdenum blues and then you know the rheology is more complex we fit very well this rheology and then because the rheology we can we can separate uh, fall down or stable or, or, or partially stable in, in the case of partially stable suspension and by by pressing filtering we have succeed in obtaining this kind of of uh, sample this is about a three centimeter um, cylinder of mulai molybdenum but with a continuous functionally grain material this is a continuous functionally grain uh, metal molybdenum metal in una mulai matrix that means at the top we have almost no metal we have only mulai if we are moving down we are increasing the fraction of metal and so on and then this is just the line profile of the analysis and this is just the the uh, specular polish surface of this uh, pellet but the more interesting point here is if you make a look just with your new eyes you don't need any kind of testing you can see that uh, this region is very high reflectant region because it's like a metal and then immediately you pass through a, a interface and then you pass through another region in this region is is like an oxide is no, no reflection at all and then what it means is just at the interface the the composition of this inter interface is just the percolation threshold is the composition of the percolation threshold and this composition is really singular completely singular this material with this um, composition have really exotic properties for instance one of these is just the permittivity values we move from 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 here to here and we increase the permittivity that means that the electric constant until reaching this point this point is just the percolation threshold is located around 60 volume percent and you can see that the difference in permittivity between this point and the, and the mulai one is six order of magnitude something un, un, unbelievable before and then we can handle with this concept new concept of percolative material we call percolative material and this concept was transferred other people use it in the case of polymer metal system and I, 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 I have news that companies are now fabricating devices on base of this particular concept and then just to tell you what mean this percolative composition what is exactly the trick of this and the trick is the metal particle in this particular composition this percolative composition mean that all the metal is constituting so called infinite cluster what mean an infinite cluster infinite cluster mean i can move from the surface for instance of this material to to any point inside the volume through metal particle touching way i mean all the particles are touching each other and following you know complex geometry and this complex geometry of touching touching metal particle give this material so particular uh, properties well that's that was very interesting and we were working and we were very excited with this and then because of this we have plenty of of work plenty of people have cooperated with with this idea um, and when we we have several people with phd on this particular topic or related topic all of this herencia work from steyer bartolome Lopez, Fátima Esteban, eh, Antonio Esteban, Teresa Rodríguez, Marcos Díez, Antonio de Aza, Miguel Espino, maybe another more, no? But that's the, 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 the more former student. They make a fantastic work, improving the knowledge a lot. And then also we have the possibility and the capability 
because of this material to work with different groups and different universities, like in the case of Sevilla, with Arturo Dominguez, with Diego Gómez, he's already here, or with uh, Kiko Guitian in Santiago de Compostela, or with Anglada in University uh, Politécnica of Catalonia, of course, with Elices, uh, Dr. Professor Pastor, Pastor, or with uh, Professor Jose Maria Torralba from University of Carlos III. And also in Berkeley, I don't tell you how many people we were, uh, we were sending in Berkeley with, with Tony. Tony already mentioned to you, but not also with Tony, also with, with Eduardo and with, and with Gareth Thomas. They were working several times with different people. It was a fantastic co cooperation. But also an, a very good cooperation work with INSA Lyon, with Professor Fantosi, and also we, we work quite, quite closely you know, with Japanese people like Professor Tanimoto or University of Kyushu, big professor Morinaga already died. He, he was a wonderful guy. You know? uh, and then we enjoy a lot to work together and so on. But not everything has been beautiful in this metal ceramic uh, field. I have some frustration. One of these is, is the ruby color. We, I, for me, for me is, I, I love ruby color. And then we were, we were trying to have ruby color because of the plasmon of Cooper is located in the region that we can have the ruby color. And then we were very heavy and we were very close. You, know, you can see that this is the ruby color using sepiolite, sepiolite nano Cooper, or sepiolite nano gold, but we never succeed completely. You know, after a few weeks, the beautiful ruby color become brown, and so on. And still, and still is a pending world that maybe somebody else will finish. But anyway, not everything was perfect. And then, what well, happened? The, the time is moving, the time is going on. We were working, paperwork is coming more and more and more. And then I have to say that more of my time was on paperwork. But then one day, in 2002, in the, in the summer of 2002, uh, I was uh, with Ramon Torrecillas drinking a beer in his house terrace. He has a very, a very good house terrace, humid and so on, very, very nice when I come from Madrid because I can respire uh, uh, humid air. And then we were very relaxed talking about this new concept of percolating material how this concept percolative material can be transferred to alumina zirconia composite for heat practice. That was a very hot topic at that particular moment, very hot topic. And then we were talking how this is possible. I, I really have my mind in white, you know, I, I don't know, because we were working with, with oxide metal system and then with oxide metal system, we, we, we figured out how, how we can do it. But with oxide, it was difficult. And then Ramon suggested that maybe the percolation threshold can be related to the critical problem of aging. The aging was really, at that time, a terrible problem. And they said, well, maybe this percolation threshold can have... She said, my goodness, this, you are right, maybe, why not? But I have no, no idea right now how to measure, how to determine this. And then coming back, I... I talked to, to our physics guy, this is Carlo Pizarroman, and then he, I asked him if we can have some optic solution because by electrical measurement it was impossible. And then he said, no, 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 yes, we have. We can do that through infrared reflectance measurement. Oh, yeah, 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 for sure. We, you know, look at this spectrum and so on. Then we, we start working like crazy. This is a very interesting point. If you, you see, you confirm to me that by optical measurement it's possible to determine the percolation threshold, and then why not? We can start. And we start, uh, I will tell you later. Uh, then at that particular moment, this, I would like to emphasize this, that at that particular time, alarming problem related to YTCP hypnotism affecting 20,000 patients in, were reported. The 20,000 patients was blocked because of of breaking problem with the aging of zirconia. And then uh, the aging occurs by a slow tetragonal tumoroclinic zirconia transformation and the grain of any surface in contact with body fluid inducing roughness, wear and premature failure. This was terrible and that was a fail of, of, the, pro of the production of company the company fabricating this heat prosthesis and the company was Sengoven and Sengoven had to stop the production and not also that, but health agency all over the world suspend the, the, the sale of anything containing pure zirconia. And it was immediately stopped. It was a big deal because the cost of this fail was higher than 1 billion euros to the company. And 
the company was a very strong company and they it still survived, but they, any, any small company cannot afford. And that was the situation at that particular time. And then what? Well, we start working, you know, a team of people was formed immediately. The team of people from, from our institute was Carlos Pecha Román, Bartolomé, Joaquín Requena, myself, and also people from from the uh, Lyon, because the people from Lyon have the capability to measure the aging very well. We have no capability at that particular time. And then, of course, the Ramon Torrecilla from here. And then we, we start preparing by slip casting, you know, different kinds of composition and so on. And then we have found, we found finally, that uh, the, percolation, the percolation by this uh, uh, infrared reflection measurement was located at 16 volume percent of zirconia. And this limit coincides with the, um, with the concentration of, of alumina zirconia um, to, um, without any kind of aging problem. And then we can, um, from this paper, we, we already fix that the, the percolation threshold is 16 volume percent and the aging problem starts when we have more than 60 volume percent. And then this is a limit. The limit of, of, uh, of the zirconia in alumina can, according with our result, are strongly located in 60. Well, and then we were very much honest in our paper due to the strong problem, the strong problem, a uh, hot problem at that particular time. Maybe today, you know, uh, people are a little bit more soft, but we were very strong in our paper. And then we say in our paper that uh, the Serante Diolox Delta that was fabricating at that time, or start, start uh, developing new uh, femoral head with uh, alumina zirconia, and the, the zirconia content of this developing was 70 volume percent. And then 70 volume percent is one volume percent over the, uh, above the circulation threshold. And then you have to be careful with this. The, we, we mentioned that. It, it was a state also, it is stated also, that the temperature of protein sulfate can reach them can reach up the temperature until 50 degrees C. That means the time of aging can, can be shorter than the one predicted by in vitro, in vitro measurement. And then you have, to be, you have to take into account also this possibility. Mm, then we recommend strongly in our paper that manufacturing, that, that no aging at all will be acceptable in this kind of material. And then we publish the paper the paper already appeared in, in advanced materials, and a few weeks later, you know, the company, it's a strong German company, called to me immediately. Right? Well, you know, we, uh, the, the guy that called to me was the technical director. I am the technical director of Ceram Tech, and then I would like to have with you a meeting in Madrid on this point. We would like to discuss with you this point. This is very important for us, and then we have to be clear with this. Okay, okay, no problem. You can meet us all. Then the people come, and the people that come from Seram Tech was the chief executive officer, I mean the top, top level man. The second, the technical director, and the, the third one was the production manager. We have a meeting. Our, from our side was Ramon Torrecillas, Carlos Pizarroman, and myself. We were six in a room and then talking with this. And the, I have to say that this meeting was a tense meeting, a very tense meeting. And then uh, they report to us by active and passive way that uh, they product have no aging at all. Okay, we say, well, I don't know if you project have because we never tested your project, but whatever we, we can ensure from now ahead is if the concentration of, of zirconia is over 60 volume percent, you may have an age in the future. Well, and then the people left the, 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 the place and we knew later that after the meeting, they contact, excuse me, they contact several groups in Japan and in France to counterbalance our result. I am not going to tell you detail about that. But the matter is, Serantex, Biolox, is manufacturing Delta, that means this femoral, femoral head, with 70 volume percent of zirconia, one volume over the percolation threshold, from 2003. And now, and during this time, they have about 90% of the worldwide market of this prosthesis. I'm not talking about Mickey Mouse. These people are producing 90% of the market, worldwide market, okay? And then, well, just a few weeks ago, I, 
I read exactly this paper. Ten years later of this meeting on the production, ten years later of our publication, 29 years old men, 1.85 meter height, 85 kilo, kilogram weight, was involved in a car accident in November 2011. He was implanted with Serum Tech Delta, alumina, 70 volume percent, femoral head. And then this guy was passed through operation and so on. And then a team of people uh, published the result of this material in, a, in, a, in the July issue of orthopedics, volume 37, number seven, where of a composite ceramic head caused by linear fracture. And then this is just whatever happened. You can see the, 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 the retrieved uh, femoral head. You see how roughness take place because of the tragonal to monoclinic transformation. You can see the, the cross section, how this roughness is going, is going into, into the volume. That means percolation threshold took place in this phenomena because affect the whole volume. No other possibility. It's because of the transformation threshold. No way. And then, well, they, uh, this case is, and uh, many other, okay, similar cases are at present under federal drug and uh, drug administration investigation. And then, uh, well, this is the matter. And in this paper, in this particular paper, the, the author, the author report that uh, uh, the rate of fracture, of fracture of delta ceramic femoral head, according to this paper, and considering different, different sources, uh, start from 0.004% to 1.7%. Uh, this is a big range because it depends on the, on, the, on the people that have made the test, someone with 25 patients, someone go with 80 patients, and so on and so on. And then, well, uh, the lower one, this one, comes from the company, okay? This one is the, is the data reported by the company. And then, considering just a figure in the middle, 8.8, that was more or less close to the reality, and considering this, this figure also, because the number of implanted femoral head in these 10 years was 1,285,000, then, <clears throat> if this is true, and I believe it's true, <clears throat> and then during these 10 years, about 10,000 patients have suffered fracture because of percolation threshold place. And then just to tell you how much it was, I only talk about the cost, how much it was the cost of the corresponding revision of these 10,000 patients, it was estimated to be 250 million euros. I don't consider the pain, I don't consider many other, many other worst part. Then just to tell you this information, the total cost of the salary received by a material scientist like myself during his active life is less than 2.5 million euros. I mean, okay, the, the, the money put in, inside always is very good. And then let me to talk to you the last chapter of this issue. This happened a few weeks ago. And then another paper appeared. Advanced in zirconia toughness alumina biomaterial for total heat replacement by Kurtz, Bueno, etc. They have been published in Journal of Mechanical Behavior of Biomedical Material just a few weeks ago. And then I, don't, I am not going to, 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 to comment this paper. I suggest if you like, read this paper. I just quoted, literally quoted, the following sentence. Science, the transformation mechanism spreads from grains to contacting grains, percolation theory, okay? Pecha Roman et al. 203, our paper, have shown that the maximum zirconia fraction to limit the spread of transformation is related to the percolation threshold. Or, in other words, the interconnectedness of the zirconia phase. This fraction is established to be 60 volume per second. And Kyocera Medical, after half a lot of development, eh? Kyocera Medical have developed their composition according to this percolation threshold. Pecharoman, et al., and bueno. Bueno is just the general manager, quality and sharing corporate division of this Kyocera. And then Kyocera starts sending alumina zircona femoral head at the market in 2011. Well, I have to tell you that this was a very happy news for me because after 10 years, a big company like that, after a lot of, a lot of tests, 
already give us you know, the reason. And I hope that because of this, less fraction of patients will suffer some kind of terrible pain. Um, now, well, this is the three cases I would like to tell you. Three moments, exciting moments. Um, now I'm going to tell you in a more relaxed manner the enjoyable, happy hours of meeting with many colleagues, friends and students from all over the world. That was an also important part of my activity. Very satisfactory in, in any regard and enjoyable because you have the capability to meet people, to meet different cultures, to meet different um, uh, manner of research and so on. And then that was really very interesting for me. Uh, well, I will show you this moment through picture. Okay? This picture was taken in Beijing, you know, in June 1986. We were invited because big professor Gareth Thomas made a very good connection with these people. We were invited by the, by the uh, China government to deliver a seminar on Mulai Zirconia Reaction Sintering Composite, Reaction Sintering Refractory. At that particular time, China produced billion of ton of, of, of steel, but a very low quality. The, the specific consortium of refractory at that particular time by ton of steel was around 50 kilograms. And this figure in, in Europe was about 10. I mean, the, the quality was not very good. I remember that um, uh, Professor Gareth Thomas told me, if I had to buy a, a building in this new, new tower, I, I will never do it because this tower will go to collapse due to the very bad quality of the steel. Anyway, and then we were there with Professor De Aza, and we, we enjoyed 20 days teaching with this. Uh, the, the team of our people was the director of the whole factory of China. That was a very interesting uh, uh, seminar. This is just in Berkeley with Professor Pass, with Pitomsia in a visit we did. This is just to having uh, a beer. It's very interesting also because the beer over there are different than here. We test a lot of beer because of this, of this meeting. Uh, and this is, it was another important meeting, you know? important meeting in Madrid, and then we get in touch with many other uh, group from Europe that was very interesting facing the new, the new European project. And then this is just the Professor Fantosi, and, uh, and then we have uh, here Professor Jose Maria Zorretosa. He gave us the money to, to, to just to, to develop or to pay this Congress, and so on. And then, uh, uh, this is a moment, you know, this one is sailing in the Ria da Rosa with, with Kiko Gitian, my wife, and, and Ramon, and that was joking with uh, Eduardo, you know, about the high technology these people have. You can see, you no, know, this is just a very old, very old mixing machine. He said, well, this is the technology you have over here. And you were laughing a lot. Okay, and this was a picture of the, of the team in one particular moment. And also I had the possibility to visit the gallery of the OFC, something that maybe if I will have not this profession, I will not do it so frequently. Okay. And then uh, we were, I think, uh, already this picture has been already taken by, by have been given to you by Ramon. That was really, really unbelievable. You know? The wind was so strong that that can move you, you know, like a, like a foil. And this is a picture with Professor Nihara, Kiyoshi Nihara is an authority in ceramic metal. And um, this is a picture with, uh, with a student of uh, China student. These China students were working all the time, you know. And they, they <laughs> these people stop, when they stop the lecture, they come to me and say, well, I have a few of your, of your paper. And I would like to use play me some doubts, you know, I mean, my goodness, <laughs> I like the time to have a beer. <laughs> so, well, they, they was, okay, and then I, I, I said, okay, come to my room, and we were discussing, that was the discussion we had with the student with the paper, okay? Anyway, something like that is, is also great. Um, this is a very nice picture because uh, all of these nice girls, you know, in this particular meeting, that was the kickoff meeting in 2006, this nice girl start the PhD at that particular moment. And then, uh, nowadays, 
All of them are already working in wonderful companies or in professors of the university or creating companies and so on. This is also a very uh, proud activity we, we, we did. Uh, for me, this is a, a wonderful uh, new when I know that all these people and all the previous students have already a good position in the society. They are doing a good job and this is wonderful. And here also, well, this is the, the picture with, with Professor Yoshimura. And then Professor Yoshimura there was in, in, in the Daytona American meeting. Professor Yoshimura asked me, please, these people from, from China and from Taiwan, or whatever, they like to have a picture with us. I asked, shoo, 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 because they believe that we are all and we know a lot about this guy, okay? And then we take this picture. But this is because we are all, not because we know too much. <laughs> And then also here with Professor Okada, is one of the leaders in, in Mulai. I, I spend a lot of time with Mulai. And then uh, we are quite good friends. This is a meeting also in, in Asturias a few years ago, in 2011. And then what is it, the picture of the department when we were together? It's about 2007, something like that. More of these people are not already in our, meet, in our, in our department. And, and now, also, you know, continue with this. I have also the possibility to visit Ephesus. This is a wonderful ruin. Uh, this is just the, <clears throat> the library of Ephesus because of this meeting. Not everything is, wor is, is, is work. And then also we have some time, relaxed time, to have some beer. The problem is these young people, some of the young people are not already here, can have too much beer and I cannot follow. But you know, <laughs> that was the only problem. The rest were beautiful. And then just to have a nice uh, uh, lunch after a, a meeting, or just a, a nice lunch with many people after, after the, one of the meetings of this, my last project in, in, the, in my activity right now. And then let me give some words about my, my good friend, Professor Gareth Thomas. He passed away, unfortunately, last January 2004. And really, he was a personality. He was a unique personality that I spent with him plenty of hours, plenty of trips. Um, he was a pushing man, very intelligent, very bright. Um, well, that was one of the last uh, time we had the chance to, to, to drink a, a good wine. He was an expert in wine also. Um, well, I really, I really miss, miss his, his talk and really miss his brilliant discussion. And this is just, as everybody knows in this room, some picture about one of the more important series of, of workshops that we, we performed, Tony and I. It was really very, very successful, very, very much successful. Not only because of the quality of the people that attended this meeting, it was the first, first rate professor in the world in this particular area, but also because it was a social meeting, you know, we can, we can, propitiate or facilitate the meeting of the student with a big professor from all over the world. Something that, you know, is not possible normally in the regular meeting. And then the student can have, let's say, a, a talk, a short talk, a short interchange of ideas with, uh, with people like, uh, like Tony Thompson or like uh, Anthony Evan or like uh, people at this level, like Roland or, or, or Clark, the top level people at that particular time. And this guy is also here. Even he, he was he was with pain. He attended the meeting because, you know, he was a fan of this. Anyway, this was very really very interesting meeting. And this is one of the pictures I I like it. The picture was taken also in the Ria da Rosa because of this meeting with uh, Professor Anthony Eva. Maybe one of the, for sure, maybe the, the first professor in ceramic engineering in the world. He was really brilliant brilliant uh, professor and brilliant scientist, Cannon, Roland Cannon, everybody knows. And Clark, Clark was, uh, Clark is, no, was, is a former professor or former student of uh, Gareth Thomas. He's now one of the more famous uh, professors in, in Harvard. And here you have uh, Professor Torralba. This guy, I don't know, but this is a German guy, important one, and Requena. <laughs> But I don't remember the name. And um, <laughs> Joaquin Requena. And these, these three colleagues, these three colleagues and great scientists have let us, and, and we are very sorry. Then, well, 
this is just the last, uh, the last uh, slide, and then I would like to, uh, to, to give you the sentence of Joseph Conrad. At first, I thought this was an adventure. Then I realized that it was the life. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you.